Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into my official college football week number nine picks and predictions where I go through every single ranked matchup and give my final score beginning with big noon. This is an 11 a.m. Central Time kickoff. It is Kansas hosting Oklahoma. Oklahoma had that scare last week against UCF. Now they're facing a Kansas team that has been ranked in the past. You know, it's very hard to predict what Kansas is going to do because of their quarterback situation. Their starting quarterback has been out. He's been like a game time decision the last three or four weeks. He hasn't played. But Kansas in this spot, coming off the bye, I think they keep this game really close. I am expecting Oklahoma to lose once in the regular season, possibly the Bedlam rivalry game with Oklahoma State. In this one, I will give Oklahoma the win, but I could very easily see them lo losing. I do find value in Kansas being at home. It's tough because it is 11 a.m., but you're still going to have the massive crowd advantage. It's a huge game. For their university, they keep it close against an Oklahoma team who has been proven to kind of struggle here the past week or so against UCF at home. Uh, moving on to another 12 o'clock game, it is FSU traveling to Wake Forest. So it's just very hard for me to trust FSU at this point in a spot like this. This is a noon game, early morning, FSU minus 19. They're not going to be up for it. Wake Forest has shown some things. They've been able to move the ball a little bit better here more recently, but I will take Florida State to win this game, not cover the 19-point spread. Maybe I'm overreacting to that Boston College game early in the season, but this is a very similar setup where Florida State goes on the road, it's noon, it's against a bad ACC team, and they don't cover. Maybe they will in this one. I mean, you got to remember the game against Duke. They were down in that game against Riley Leonard, who was really injured, and Duke couldn't throw the ball. They end up winning and covering, but it was because they scored 21 points in the fourth quarter. So FSU showing some signs here. I will take them to win this game, but not cover. Another noon game, it is Penn State hosting Indiana. Going to be an absolute blowout. You would expect Penn State to really impose themselves and get back on track. They are still ranked number 10. Their season is not over. Obviously, you're going to get the major overreaction right after the loss to Ohio State. Look, it's clear they don't have the skill position players right now to contend with the ultra elite. They're sitting minus 30 and a half. I'll take them to cover that. Indiana is horrible. They're not going to score on the road at Beaver Stadium, 41 to 7. Moving on to the 330 window, it is the number one team right now, Georgia hosting Florida. And you can see Georgia opening minus 16 and a half. It gets bet down to 14. Guys, when I see immediate line movement like that, it makes me want to say Georgia's going to cover this spread and fade the public. Because you have to understand, this is a stylistic matchup. And you look at this Georgia team, amazing defense. I understand the offensive issues, the loss of Brock Bowers. But Florida is horrible on offense. They're just not... I, I, I know you can say, well, Graham Mertz is like completing all these passes. Guys, I don't care. They're not good. Georgia, to me, is going to very easily win this game. I will say, this is the first year in forever, at least like four or five years, that I, can, I could actually see a scenario where Florida could keep this game close. I'm not expecting it. And when I see line movement where all of the general public is on one side, it makes me want to go on the opposite. And I think this is a Georgia defense versus Florida offense. And the Georgia defense is still ultra elite. And they are coming off a bye. I believe Florida is coming off a bye as well. So maybe an even in terms of, you know, the overall rest. But I will take Georgia minus the 14. The analytics love Georgia. Then again, the analytics cannot account for injuries. The next 330 game, it is Texas probably very likely without Quinn Ewers they're going to be starting their backup Murphy who is also a very good recruit but he is a backup taking on BYU Texas sitting minus 18 and a half BYU can score man they really can I think Texas wins this game but just like last week when I picked Houston plus the 22 I like the value in BYU this is another one of those weird matchups where Technically, this is a conference matchup. It's a de facto non-conference matchup because Texas is leaving for the SEC next year, so they're probably never going to face BYU, at least for the foreseeable future. They are currently ranked number seven, and I just find value in the plus 18 and a half against the backup quarterback. I understand the backup does have a good pedigree. He's been in games. I get it. But in this situation, I mean, Texas, 95% chance to win against BYU. I don't think BYU's that bad. They're really not. 
not. I mean, they can move the ball a little. They've got the transfer QB from USC. It's going to be a higher scoring game. I will take Texas there. This is a ranked v. ranked matchup. It is Oregon taking on Utah, and Utah just continues to somehow win with Bryson Barnes. I'll tell you what, if Utah wins this game, I think Bryson Barnes enters the Heisman race. How about that Heisman moment in this one? Uh, but guys, when you look at this Oregon team, they're, they already have one loss. They have to win this game. They have the talent advantage. It is a brutal environment going on the road. That's why they're only sitting minus five and a half. I will take them to win this game. Cam Rising looks like he's officially red shirting, so it's just going to be Utah's backups. Oregon, I believe College Game Day is going here as well. Again, Oregon needs this game. They know they can't lose it. It's Bo Nix's final year. Minus five and a half. I don't feel confident, but I will take them to cover 27 to 20. Utah, they've embarrassed me in the past. It's getting annoying, but I still am picking against them. Another 330 game. It is Pittsburgh traveling to Notre Dame. Notre Dame coming off their bye, sitting minus 18. And I will say, I do think this is going to be a surprisingly close game. Notre Dame is not really the type of team to blow out a team like Pittsburgh. Now, Pittsburgh, for sure, they're not very good. They have a losing record, but they did beat Louisville at home. Remember, Notre Dame lost to Louisville. I understand it doesn't really matter, but that's just something to keep in mind. Pittsburgh can score a little bit. They have some offensive upside. It's going to be surprising. It'll be a closer than expected game. You do have Notre Dame sitting minus 18. They will win this game, but people are going to be surprised at the final score. Another ranked v. ranked game, 330. I want to say this is on ABC. It is Duke traveling to Louisville. The entirety of this game rests on how healthy Riley Leonard is. So honestly, it's very hard for me to predict this game. You do have Louisville sitting minus four. There is good value on Duke plus the four if Riley Leonard is healthy. As you can see, it's basically a pick em of court according to ESPN FPI. I will actually take Duke to win this game outright assuming Riley Leonard plays. This is a Duke team. They fight hard. They were beating FSU on the road in a primetime game with basically no passing game. So let's say Riley Leonard gets a little bit more healthy. They win this game on the road in a surprisingly close one. Louisville, on the other hand, they do play a lot better when they're at home. That loss to Pittsburgh, it is brutal. It just depends how healthy is Riley Leonard. If Duke cannot pass the ball, they're very likely going to lose this game. Maybe he gets another you know, week to heal. You, you give him some shots, you give him something, and they end up winning this game. I do not think Louisville at this point is nearly as good as their record. They're due for some correction, and that's why I see them losing this game to Duke. Moving on to a 4 o'clock game, it is USC sitting minus 10 at California. So USC, they're still ranked, you know, people saying they should be unranked. Obviously, it's a complete mess, but I do expect Caleb Williams and this team to right the ship. It's going to be a higher scoring game. I think they cover the minus 10. There's decent value on USC minus 10. Cal really let me down last week against Utah. It was disappointing. It was sad to see. And I'm just not going with them here. So USC, let's not overreact. They did lose two games, but they're still 6-2 and two on the year. It's not completely lost. Minus the 10, we will take them on the road in that one. Next, we do have Tulane traveling to Rice. Tulane sitting minus 11.5, a 4 o'clock game. And guys, this smells of upset. You can see Tulane with a 67% chance to win. That's the typical range. You see these upsets. The team on the road with kind of a 60% chance. I am smelling it. Even the minus 11.5, they will lose this game to JT Daniels. Remember him? He's on his fifth school. I've got Rice winning this game outright, 30-27. to 27. Rice can move the ball. They've got a good offense. They average a bunch of yards per game. Tulane, on the other hand, kind of had that weird performance against North Texas where they were up 21 to nothing. They let North Texas score 21 unanswered. They end up winning by a touchdown, but still, I'm off of Tulane right now. I think Rice wins this game outright in an upset. Moving on to the night window, it's a 7 o'clock game. Washington, after a horrifically bad performance, sitting minus 26 and a half on the road at Stanford. I don't know what happened. I'll tell you what, Washington really benefited from playing at 10.30 at night because nobody was talking about this game at all. Washington cannot run the football. It's a big issue. But guys, let's not do what all the NPCs do and say, oh my goodness, Washington was terrible last week. That means Stanford's going to keep this game close. We have to think differently. That's why I'm an innovator. That's why I've evolved to the current state that I'm in. 
and that's why I'm taking Washington to cover the 26 and a half because I know I've seen this so many times. It's like, oh, Washington's terrible. The, the, you know, they couldn't score a touchdown against Arizona State. And then everyone gets off of them. And now is when you hammer them. Now is when they're a lot to cover. And they will 41-10 to 10 in that one. Another 7 o'clock game. Guys, I might, this might go down as the greatest prediction in history. If you don't know, in the preseason, I predicted Air Force to finish undefeated and make the playoff. They're probably not going to make the playoff because of their schedule. But yes, this Air Force team is elite. They're sitting minus 11.5. Colorado State does have a decent offense. You guys remember Colorado State week two against Colorado. They can throw the ball a little bit. So it's not going to be extremely easy for Air Force. But I do like them to win this game and cover the 11.5 point spread. Look at that ESPN FPI. 84% chance to win. That means they really think Air Force is like a 14 point favorite. There is value in Air Force on the road. There is value on Air Force here on the road, 30-17. to And that one, another 7 o'clock game. What a weird slate of games. That's three straight 7 o'clock games. Normally, you only get one 7 o'clock game. It is Tennessee traveling to Kentucky. Tennessee sitting minus 3.5. I do not have a good feel to this game at all, but I have been fading Tennessee recently, and I am going to continue to do it. I just do not trust Tennessee's offense, especially their passing ability against a Kentucky team. They're going to be revved up. This is a huge game for them at home against a ranked team. If Kentucky wins this, they might get ranked. And quite honestly, if you're a Georgia fan, you have to be rooting for Kentucky in this game. This is like your one quality win. And then if Kentucky wins this game, it's only going to get better because they'll probably get ranked. So I am taking Kentucky to win this game outright. Three and a half point underdogs. They're at home. These are very comparable teams. I actually think Kentucky moves the ball a little bit better in terms of their passing ability as well as Tennessee being on the road. So I do find value in the home underdog. Moving on to the primetime 730 games, it is Ohio State sitting minus 14, traveling on the road at Wisconsin. Ohio State, 88% chance to win this one. The defense is amazing. At this point, we pretty much know what Ohio State is, and it's like a polar opposite of what they've been the past four or five years. They're a defensive team that, that really struggles on offense. They certainly have talent on offense. We all know that. I think this is your typical game where Ohio State, who's a defensive-minded team, they're going into a hostile environment. They're going to turtle up, and they're going to win this game. It's going to be ugly. Kyle McCord's going to make some bad plays, but they will get it done 20-13. to I do love Wisconsin plus the 14 in this because when you look at their offense, they do have a good running back, Braylon Allen, and all that Wisconsin really needs to do because Ohio State is offensively challenged, just put together one good drive. It's going to be very hard with your backup quarterback against this Buckeye defense, but just put together one good drive and then create one short field, and you should be able to cover the 14-point spread. A lot of people obviously expecting Ohio State to crush Wisconsin in this game, but I do think this is one of those games. Ohio State really up for the Penn State game. Maybe a little bit of a letdown this week. And again, the other issue for Ohio State, you're going into a hostile environment and you cannot run the ball. Where is Dolan Hayden? Dolan Hayden's got to start playing. I'm sorry. He's the best running back on Ohio State. They could not run the ball at all against Penn State. You go on the road in a hostile environment against a Big Ten team, you got to be able to run the ball. And I understand Wisconsin not very good this year. They had that a few disappointing losses, but they at least received some votes inside the top 25. So they're like a top 30 team in college football. Moving on to another 7:30 game. It is Ole Miss coming in at number 12 at home against Vanderbilt. Coming off the bye, Ole Miss right now, only the one loss. They're on a mission. They're going to win this game very easily, 41-17. to I don't know if they'll cover, but I will say they will win this game easily. Another 7.30 game, it is UCLA. So this is a 4.30 start time at the Rose Bowl. UCLA at home against Colorado. UCLA looked amazing last week. I thought they should have moved up further than number 23. Colorado, on the other hand, Deion Sanders, the whole thing. I believe they had a bye week last week. I do think UCLA wins this game very, very easily and covers the 17 because of what they've shown recently. Remember Colorado, the horrible defense. If Colorado's going to win this game, it's going to be like 48 to 45. That's just how bad their defense is. You lose to Stanford and then you see what happens to Stanford the next week. Uh, UCLA, on the other hand, they're trending up. I've got them winning this game big. 
Moving on to the 8 o'clock game, it is North Carolina, and here it is. Finally, I was proven right. North Carolina traveling to Georgia Tech. I have loved this Georgia Tech team. But guys, what have I always said? I said North Carolina was a fraud. They end up losing to Virginia. And now here comes this snowball. You're facing a Georgia Tech team that has one of the best defenses in college football. They've got a super elite offense. They're underrated. I think they should be inside of the top 25, honestly. And Georgia Tech, with this win, they're going to catapult themselves up pretty far. North Carolina, you're losing to a 1-5 team. How can we take you seriously? And now you're only minus 11 and a half. So even Vegas is admitting that you're probably going to lose to Georgia Tech in that one. How about this random game? It is Old Dominion traveling to James Madison. James Madison, congratulations. They are ranked Old Dominion. They do have an amazing logo. James Madison sitting minus 17 in this one. I will take James Madison to win 34 to 27. I like this Old Dominion team. I like them to cover this spread. They're very solid. But James Madison, they're going to stay ranked. Congratulations. And then moving on to the nightcap, the 1030 game. It is Oregon State sitting minus four coming off their bye against an extremely explosive three-loss Arizona team. Oregon State, 62% chance to win. I will take them in a high-scoring shootout. They're not going to cover the four, but they will win this game against Arizona. Take the over late. Actually, you know what? I'm not sure what the over-under is. The over-under for this game might be like 72 I'd have to check that. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on X. Link to that's always in the description.